You may have learned about food chains and food webs in middle school science. In all ecosystems, there are producers and consumers. Producers are the plants that derive their energy from the sun. Consumers that eat producers are called primary consumers. Consumers that eat primary consumers are called secondary consumers. And consumers that eat secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers. So theoretically, you can have more consumers above tertiary consumers, but generally an ecosystem stops at the tertiary level, and you will understand why when you learn about energy flow. So all the different levels of producers and consumers are called trophic levels, and a linear representation of this would be the food chain. So notice how I'm drawing the arrows up in this food chain and not down. So the arrows represent energy flow. So the energy is flowing from the plant to the grasshopper, the grasshopper to the frog, the frog to the eagle, because essentially the food chain is showing the transfer of food energy up the trophic levels. A common misconception is that the arrows are supposed to be drawn down because the eagle eats the frog, eats the grasshopper, eats the plant, but it's actually the flow of energy up. So as I said, in this food chain, you have the plant giving energy to the grasshopper, giving energy to the frog, giving energy to the hawk. So obviously, the food chain is very oversimplified. In nature, you won't find one producer and one consumer for each trophic level. Instead, you have many organisms on each level. And Another thing is that consumers do not necessarily stay in their trophic level. For example, this hawk may be considered a tertiary consumer, but it can also eat primary consumers, such as mice. This complexity is incorporated into the food web. And the food web shows all the different relationships and energy flows in an ecosystem, or at least it tries to. So you can see all these different predator-prey relationships and starting here from the producers, it flows into all these different types of primary consumers and these primary consumers are eaten by all different types of secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. And what I was talking about before, how different consumers don't have to stay in their trophic level is represented right here. So the mule deer is a primary consumer but it can also be eaten by the coyote, which is a tertiary consumer. So you can see how interconnected all the organisms are, which is a reflection of the interconnected complexity of all things biotic and abiotic in an ecosystem. It's no wonder that changing one thing in an ecosystem can throw everything off balance. So another thing that you should know about food webs is that there are things that are in a food web that aren't usually represented. And the first thing is the sun. And the sun is the ultimate source of all energy in this food web because the producers take the energy from the sun and then dissipate it into the food web. The second thing that isn't usually shown but is there are decomposers. The reason decomposers aren't shown is because there would have to be an arrow to every single, from every single animal to decomposers. So it'd be like really, really messy because they're all going to decomposers. And what decomposers do are break down the dead organic material of animals when they die or when they poop or pee or whatever. The last thing to note is that the two examples of the food chain and food, food web that I showed you are both terrestrial examples, but there are also marine food chains and food webs that are separate from these.